Yes, I killed Wild Bill Hickok. It all happened soon after the close of the war between the states. The Denver and Rio Grande Railroad was helping push the frontier westward. It brought train load after train load of carpet baggers, freebooters, farmers, merchants, men and women of every creed and vocation with a boundless sense of adventure, ambition, and courage to seek their fortune in this golden country. It took plenty of courage to leave the last tie with civilization, the railroad, and take to the transportation of the plains, the prairie schooner, For the Indian menace was at its worst. To him, every wagon meant a family, and families settled on his hunting grounds, building towns like Tri-City. Cursed redskins. What have the Indians done now? Uh, more settlers killed. Their homes burned to the ground. Down around the Shawnee. I suppose the cavalry down at Fort El Reno are having too good a time to get out and patrol the countryside like they're supposed to do. Cavalry's doing the best it can, Bill. Don't make no mistake about it. They need horses to patrol all that territory. Horses that they haven't got. Well, if you depend on men like Jim Bailey, the Army never will get the horses they need. <laughs> well, this is a change. I thought you liked Jim Bailey. I did. He's had plenty of time to get those horses in here. Well, wild horses aren't easy to round up, Belle. I could do better without moving out of the house. Yeah, I know what you mean, but... You know, if I don't get those horses right quick, I'm going to lose that farming contract. It'll just about ruin both of us. Well, it'll serve you right, but that's your friend Bailey for you. All talk and no delivery. Aren't you going to have your lunch? Ah, I'm a little bit worried. I can't eat a thing now. I'll have something later, darling. I'll keep it warm for you. All right, sis. No one's... Is anything wrong, Henry? A note from Colonel Bradford. There's been a whole wagon train wiped out south of here by Indian ambush. And all because he didn't have enough cavalry to escort them. Colonel Bradford's way of saying that he's got to have those horses. Well, what about this fellow Johnny Reffel? Didn't you make a contact with him? Yes, he promised to bring in a herd, but he's new in these parts. I doubt if he can make it. Wild Horse Valley, a horse lover's paradise. From here, the Indian got his fleet-footed ponies. And now the white man sought the sturdier stock. And I, Johnny Rebel, meant to get enough of these beauties to keep the cavalry at Fort El Reno well-mounted. I might never have come this far west had it not been for a chance meeting with an old friend, Ring Pardo former Union soldier and famous Indian scout. He and my daughter Kate, whose mother died during the war, talked me into this expedition and building our home here.
Welcome home. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Mr. Bailey! Mr. Bailey? Well, I can see that four years of college have done things to you. In more ways than one. What do you say, Nato? She's changed, huh? She's as beautiful as a sunflower. Thank you, Nato. You're as poetic as ever. I'm very tired. I wonder if we could go home now. Well, I'll have Nato drive you out. I got some business to take care of. Just and just. Not as beautiful as ever. Huh? It's nice to see you, Sheriff Hickok. I mean, Bill. Oh, Jim, I just thought I had some shopping to do before I go to the ranch. I'll have Nato wait for you. Hey, no, I won't be long. Wait for me. Your job is sheriff. I'll take care of everything else. Why don't you relax? She's yours as far as I'm concerned. All I'm interested in this deal is my cut in good old U.S. currency. By dog it, it's Johnny Rebel. And with a herd. He's come through. Are you just going to stand still and let Longtree buy horses from anybody? That isn't in your deal. You've got a contract, and if I was you, I'd hold him to it. Good to be back, Henry. My sister Belle. Oh, how do you do, miss? To your Johnny Rebel. Henry's spoken so many times of you. When you get the horses tallied up, come in the office. We'll have a cup of coffee. I've got the money for you. Well, fine. Where do you want me to put them? The corral's down at the end of the street. How many heads did you bring in? About 40 heads this time, Henry. Yeah, they have a pleasant figure to my ears. Good. I'll see you both in a little while. All right. I think Long Tree had enough brains to buck my deal. Come on.
Those your horses up there in that corral? Jim, sure, sit down. Yep, those are my horses. I thought you had a contract with me. So I have. An exclusive one. Well, Jim, you haven't delivered to me any horses. I can't live on promises. Read the contract, Henry. It doesn't say anything about a time limit. But it does say you're not to buy horses from anyone but me. Listen, Jim. I just had word from Colonel Bradford. The Indians have wiped out another wagon train. The Army's got to have horses right now. That stuff is just scared tough. Now, you know as well as I do, they're not paying us enough for those horses. What we'll do is hold out till the price is right, and then we'll clean up. But Jim, you're not talking fair. Those horses that Rebel brought in, they're going to save a lot of lives. Henry, being patriotic is all right as long as you're rich enough to afford it. Being rich has nothing to do with it. Maybe it hasn't. Longtree, I'd like to give you a little advice. I wouldn't deal with anybody but him if I were you. Do I make myself clear? All right. I have about a hundred head to go on my deal with Rebel. As soon as he brings them in, I'll deal with no one but you. I don't think you understood, Mr. Hickok. You're not dealing with anyone but me as of right now. Now, do you understand that, Henry? Going to tell him off. Oh, they're right, Bill. The trouble is that I very foolishly signed an exclusive deal with Bailey here. Well, unfair contracts like that are meant to be broken. And Jane, she certainly doesn't look like that scrawny kid who left here four years ago. She sure has blossomed out, hasn't she? Right, pretty young woman. you were a dude. <laughs> Maybe I am. Oh, you're too pretty to be a dude. You been back to Easter school or something? I was, but I had to come home. My dad died a couple of months ago. Oh, Tom is dead. Didn't you know? Oh. No, I just got in town. It's the first time I've oh. been here since the guy out of the army. Bailey sent me word my job wasn't waiting any longer. Why did he do that? Oh, I reckon it's because I was on Lincoln's side. <laughs> Wait, Miss James, I want you to meet somebody. Hey, Johnny. Johnny Rebel, come here. Uh, Miss James, I want you to meet Johnny Rebel. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Rebel. Oh, it's my pleasure, Miss James. Uh, we just delivered a bunch of horses to Henry Longtree. It seems as the cavalry up at Fort El Reno is running short of horses. We've been having a lot of Indian trouble. Those redskin devils have killed a lot of settlers lately. I don't think this is quite the time to bore Miss James with trouble talk. Ring, I'm going to be at the ranch for a while. Come visit me. Thanks, Miss James. You too, Mr. Rebel. It'll be my pleasure. We'd better get back to work now. You mustn't feel badly about what Mr. Pardo said. They don't know there's good Indian, bad Indian. Good white man, bad white man. Hey, Pardo! What are you doing back in town? None of your business. You responsible for bringing these horses in? I don't have to give account to you. Well, you will if you know what's good for you, because in my book, you're still a dirty horse thief. <laughs> about. Ask him. 
I just came down here to get a tally, and these guys jumped me. What's your name? Rebel, Johnny Rebel. Well, look, we're wary of strangers around here, mister. And your being with Pardo is no recommendation. So you're the great Wild Bill Hickok we've heard so much about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Hickok. Well, you can see, in due respect to your law, that myself and my men are not armed. Well, that's real good of you. And up until now, we've broken no laws, right? Not that I know of. Well, until we do, leave us alone. I'll be back as soon as I tally with Longtree, fellas. Right, Johnny. Hey, Pardo! Hey, Pardo! I'm not gonna waste words with you. If you're not in this town in one hour, you'll be looking at it from behind bars. Come on, Jim. Got some for me, Henry. Sit down, Johnny. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, Rebel. Yeah, what's that? Some time ago, I signed an exclusive contract with Jim Bailey. He hasn't brought a herd of horses in, but it looks like he's gonna hold me to this contract. You're gonna have to find yourself a new buyer. Now look, Henry, all I've had around here this morning is trouble. I have a contract with you for 140 other horses, right? There's 40 of them. At $30 a head, that means $1,200. Now, do I get my money, or do I have to argue with you about it? Charlie, I intend paying you for the herd that you brought in. But I simply can't take any more. There's your money. You having trouble, Henry? What are you doing with this gun, Bill? Well, I thought maybe something was wrong. Oh, no. Well, how about that cup of coffee for Johnny? Remember, he promised it to you? Oh, and a cup of coffee. Gee, I'm sorry, Bill. I mean, Miss Longtree, I, I didn't mean to be so rough on Henry, but myself and my boys need this money. Uh, by the way, this cannon, do you use it? I've been known to. I might use it right now. Oh. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're driving, Indian? Dr. Reed! Dr. Reed! Don't you remember me? I'm Ann James. Why? Why, so it is. Ann James. I, I wouldn't have recognized you. When did you get back to our little town? I just came in on the stage. Doc, I've got to talk to you about my father. Uh, yes, yes, of course, but uh, I'm sorry I don't have much time now. I, I have to see a patient right away. You see, he never wrote me he was sick. Well, just what did happen? Well, Ann, it, uh, it was just one of those things. Uh, you see, even I didn't realize how sick he was. Sure, he didn't either. Uh, you remember, he never was one to complain much. Please, I've got to know more about what happened. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, then I'll be at your office in the morning. Uh, that'll be fine. Uh, that'll be fine. Just came from checking on that Johnny Rebel. He comes highly recommended, I'm afraid he spells trouble. 
Scared to death, Bill. Look, his nickname is Johnny Rebel. Have you ever heard of a man called Johnny Savage? Yeah. So what? So what? He's the man that held off a whole company of Union soldiers when they hit his forest plantation. Now look, you're my figure. If he finds out about us, there goes our government contract for horses. Oh, it's been a long time, old friend. Besides, Jim, there's Anne. I don't think you'd like her to get wised up. Now look, you take care of your business in town and I'll handle this, this rebel or whatever his name is. And besides, there's a friend of ours around from Arizona. Pack the kids. That's right. Just keep our hands clean. All right, stay in town. Better be careful of him. He's grown up to be quite a stallion in the last three years. Like you. He's changed. When the moon is full, he runs with a wild one. You mean my little pony has grown up to be a he-man? <laughs> Well, let's look at this ranch of yours. A lot of land, ain't it? A lot of land. Jim, what's the matter with you? I don't seem to know you any longer. You said there was a time when I used to thrill at being with you. You're like your dad, Ann. He never did take me serious either. But I've come a long ways in the last three years, and that's because I'm smart. That's why I'm advising you to sell this place. I won't talk of selling until after I speak to Doc Reed. Hey, Bailey! Bailey! You better come quick! What's the deal there, Pancho? Looks like Blackleg. I hope you're wrong. NATO! Right into town and get Doc Reed right away. Do you really think it's Blackleg? Certainly hope not. Seems like ever since this year's drought, we've had nothing but trouble. Well, well, Dad never wrote me there was a drought. He didn't want you to worry, but actually there hasn't been enough feed for the stock. No spring rain. You make it sound almost hopeless. Well, it is and it isn't. But this is just one of the reasons I want you to sell this place. We can talk about that later. What will you do if it is Black Leg? Destroy the stock. It's the law. But let's don't worry about that till Doc Reed gets here. Besides, I'm ramrod in this outfit, and that's my problem. Well, as long as I own part of this ranch, it's only fair that I share my part of its problems. You boys stay with that heifer till Doc Reed gets here. What's your verdict, Doc? It's not like leg, and you know it. Doc, I want you to write me out an order asking me to destroy this critter. Because he is suffering from black leg. But, Bailey, I can't do that. Black leg is a highly contagious disease. An order like that would cause an uproar all over the countryside. I know that. But we'll burn this heifer so that disease won't spread. I ain't gonna do it. Now, Doc, this is no time for you to go a country. You're wrong, Bailey. It is time. High time. What's eating you? I saw Ann in town this morning. Couldn't bring myself to face her knowing what I'd done. It was because of my neglect that her father died. But it was your fault. You kept me so liquored up that night, I was no good for anyone. Let alone a man as sick as Tom James was. But it was you that gave him the wrong medicine. I didn't pour that liquor down you. Well, you might as well have. It's the same thing. Bailey, I'm an old man. I don't care what happens to me anymore, but I ain't doing your dirty work any longer. Now oh, you listen to me. You're in this thing as deep as I am, and you're going to do just as I say and keep your mouth shut. Now. What's your verdict now, Doc? It's Black Lake. Here, have a drink.
possibility of black leg epidemic. Nice going, Jim. You've even got the newspaper working for you. Yeah, but it should drop the price of real estate. this report about Doc Reed finding a black leg on the James Ranch. I don't know any more about it than you read in there. Jim, does that offer for my place still go? Why, sure, Dan, but I don't think this is anything to get excited well, about. Okay, well, I'm ready to sell right now. Well, all right. You have your lawyer, drop the papers, bring them in, and I'll sign. Okay, fine. It's a deal. I'll get Blake right now. Number one, you just won yourself a cigar. What's the matter with Dan? Oh, this story in the paper has him in a panic. Well, he's got a right to be. Black Lake can wipe out every herd in this area. Sheriff, sure. you seen anything of Bill? No, oh, why? Remember me? I'm Ann Jane. Oh, I'm sorry, Ann, for not recognizing you. Bell left home last night, and I haven't seen her since. Well, Belle's a big girl. I'm sure she can take care of herself. Sure, maybe she's out looking after those wild horses that broke out of your corral last night. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Well, maybe not, but I've got to go out and look around again for her. I'll go with you. Good, Anne. Come on. If there's anything we can do to help, let us know. on the heel and step on it. He's getting heavy. Hey, Ring, what do you think spooked them horses this morning? Well, I thought it was rattle out there, Johnny, but I believe it was those redskin devils. Yeah, I kind of had the same feeling. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. Hey, Tommy. Yes, sir. You bring along enough iron to shoe these horses with? If that horse tells him he's cleaning out the corrals every night, we don't need any shoe-ons for the wild ones. What are you going to do about that horse, anyway? I'm going to take this old Black Morgan I'm shoeing right here and kick. I never heard those Black Morgans been fast. Well, this one is. Old Tom Hanlon says the fastest thing ever come from Arizona. I'm going to go ahead some boys. Hey, maybe we better go help him shoot. Yeah, I need to work up an appetite myself. Shorty, been giving you a bad time? Well, don't call me Shorty in front of them. Dad, you should let me go with you to catch that white stallion. Man's work, Kate. I can ride and shoot as well as any man. If you just learn to cook as good as your mom, and I'll be satisfied. Besides, I'm not going after it. I never knew you to give up so easily before. Not giving up. That old stallion is just naturally going to catch himself. All I ever do around this outfit is cook and wash. Cook and wash. What's the matter, Kate? Still wanting to be a horse hand? I told you you should have fed at the ranch. This is a man's work. Man's work? Would it ever be finished without women? <laughs>
Hey, Johnny. There's somebody coming. It's a woman. Here. What are you doing out here, Miss Bell? Well, the horses you brought in yesterday are gone. Somebody must have let them out of the corral during the night. Well, for goodness sake. You got a notion who might have done it? Well, the opinion is that you did. Yeah, whose? Jim Bailey's. Jim Bailey's? Now, why do you suppose he'd think a thing like that? No one else ever bucked him before. And he's going to try to keep you from delivering any more horses to Henry. I know he'd frame most anything on you to get you out of the way. Now, let me get this straight. All I want to do is to deliver horses to your brother so he can deliver them to the army. And for this, Bailey's going to drive me out of the country. He used to be different. I kind of liked him. Something has changed him into a very greedy man. Well, why come to me? Why don't you go to your local sheriff? Hey, Cock, don't make me laugh. The only way those horses will get to the fort is if you deliver them personally. Well, what about your brother? He's afraid. Oh, he talks big until Bailey shows up, and then there's just no backbone. That's why I took it on myself to come see you. I see. Well, we are getting ready to make another roundup. I'll see what I can do about a straight delivery. What's that? My kid, Kate. Your daughter? Yeah. Her mother died while I was in the Army. Oh, I'm sorry. We'd better see what's wrong. Yeah. What's the matter, Kate? Why, I just have a terrible pain on my side. Yeah, take it easy, Shorty. Listen, I'll get Doc Reed. You'd better get on with your roundup. I'll take care of things here till you get back. You think she'll be all right? Sure. I'll be back, baby. Okay. White horse he's been looking for, all right. He's wearing shoes. I wonder who he belongs to. Probably one of those sailors the Redskins scout. Yeah, it could be. Well, let's get him on back to camp. We'll find out. Hey, then. You'll be all right again in a couple days. Uh, just stay in bed and keep from moving around. In, but I, I gotta cook for this outfit. Now you just lie quiet. I'll take care of the cooking for this outfit. How is she, Doc? Oh, <coughs> um, uh, probably her appendix uh, is a bit inflamed. Can't tell for sure, but uh, she'll be all right in a couple days. Just keep her from moving around and uh, uh, give her a couple of these pills every three hours. Looks like you could use a couple of pills yourself. Bell, I, I want to talk to you. All right, Doc. Sometimes it's good to get things off your mind. Yes, sometimes a man ain't so proud of what he's got on his mind. Yes, Bell, I, I have a lot on my mind. I wonder if you'd be interested in listening. Let's have a cup of coffee. I'd be mighty obliged.
down, Ring. I'll see you in a little bit. Well, you did all right. Yeah, we picked up about 20 then. But how's Kate? Well, it looks like I'm going to be your new cook, at least for a few days. Yeah, your brother may not like that. Well, after what Doc Reed just told me, there may be a lot of things he won't like. Just what did Doc Reed tell you? The same thing that I said. Bailey's going to try and stop you from delivering those horses. You know, I'm getting tired of people telling me that Bailey says I can't do this and I can't do that, and especially that I can't deliver my horses wherever I please and whenever I please. Hey, Bob, you and Tim get up 15 or 20 head of those horses and run them into Longtree's Corral. And if Bailey gets in your way, run over him. ever happened to him to check deep in a sugar barrel. I'm going to see if he was making sense. What happened? It's Doc Reed. He's dead. Dan. Bevan. Yeah. Are you headed for town? Yeah. Get these papers to Hickok right away. Right. All right. Hickok. Get over it. 
That's right. You get him mad enough to start an uprising right here, and then James will sell faster and cheaper. The Arizona kid takes care of Johnny Savage or Johnny Rebel, and that leaves us free to get rid of NATO. Legal life. You've just won yourself a cigar. <laughs> improvement. Yeah, if I could just find out what Bailey's game is. If all he wants out of this business is a cut, well, I think I'll give it to him and start out of trouble. Well, I'm positive from his treatment of my brother, Jim Bailey, would never be satisfied with part of anything. And Hickok? I can't prove it, but I'm convinced he's with Jim all the way. Yeah, with a setup like that, the James Ranch behind it, what do you think we can do? Well, you and your men could put on your guns and fight. Don't ride me about fighting, pal. I tried guns once, and a lot of innocent people got hurt, like Kate and my boys. They're farmers and ranchers who lost their homes during the war. They're not gun fighters, nor any match for Bailey's men. So if I can make a deal with him, I think that's what I'll do. It's too late for you to make a deal with Bailey. Your time's just about up. The Arizona kid. You know me? Yeah. To make a long story short, I'm Johnny Savage. The great Johnny Savage. My reputation will take a big jump after I do this job. I'm not a lawman anymore, kid. I'm just what you see, wild horses. Trying to get horses to Fort El Reno to protect this country from savages. Savages like me, I suppose. You're not a savage, kid. You're just off on the wrong foot. Isn't there any way I can talk you out of this? No. And if you're holding anything, you better start using it. I knew you had an ace in a hole, I just couldn't spot it. Bill, I've been looking all over for you. Stop hollering, Henry, and come here. Let's go. 
trouble. Can't get your horses through to the port. But your trouble's all cleared out now. It's all wrapped up for you. You're all under arrest for murder. For the murder of these poor, defenseless Indians. got you into this, Johnny. Seemed like a good idea at the time. You were willing to fight for what was right. Gave me incentive to go along with you. You know, Henry, this confession of Doc Reed's about Baylor and Hickok was fantastic. Yeah. Well, we've got one thing in our favor. Judge Parker will be in on the late afternoon stage today. Have you seen Ring and my boys anything? Yes, they're in jail. Hickok locked them up for shooting Indians. Tommy, get a hold of Chuck and barricade this camp. I'm going to town and see if I can get a hold of Judge Parker and get our boys out of jail. But Judge Parker won't be in until tomorrow morning. You seem to know an awful lot about this thing for a girl that just got into it. That's where you're wrong. I've been in it for years. Maybe one of us could ride out the port and bring the soldiers. Yeah, I suppose they could walk over here. I can take life back and lead the horses through to the fort. That would be just all I would need to get you and the horses lost on the trail. No, thank you. You and Belle go over to the tent, take care of Kate. I'll see if I can figure a way out of this thing. Uh, what about ringing the boys, Johnny? They'll be all right. They're in the safest place I know. They've already done their work. She'll get through, don't worry. She's got the courage to do it. Well, tomorrow we can back the play by meeting with Judge Parker, see if we can't get things started. Many of them, huh, Johnny? Johnny! Johnny, come here! Oh, you poor baby. You poor, poor baby. Only the innocent. It's always the innocent. As Bailey prophesied, Hickok's cruel treatment of NATO caused him to unleash his savage fury on them sooner than they thought. The Indian joined forces with me less than after I, too, had sworn vengeance on the same heads for my daughter's death.
Johnny. He and Bill and Longtree went in town to meet Judge Parker. Oh, who's Judge Parker? The circuit judge who comes to town once a month to handle cases like this. Well, what are we waiting for, man? Let's go. without arousing too much suspicion. Good, that's just all I'll need. I'm going with you, Johnny. I'm going with you, too. Without you, I'd have nothing to live for. From the look of that street, you'll stand a good chance of having nothing to live for. The stage will be here any minute. It gives us just enough time to get up there to meet Judge Parker, right in front of Hickok's office. Remember, the street's down on my right. You stay 10 feet behind me. And Henry, stay 10 feet behind her. If the first sign of trouble, you hit the dirt. Let's go. Keep Rebel occupied. I got men stationed all along the street. Rooftops, doorways, everywhere. With orders to shoot the first thing that moves. Can I borrow this? Copy yourself. You coming with me? I told you that Rebel makes one rifle sound like a regiment. Besides, you can bet your life that Longtree has given him that letter and he'll turn it over to Judge Parker when he arrives. When that happens, I don't want to be here. So in a pinch, Hickok, the great town tamer, turned yellow. Someday I'll kill you for that. Maybe. But right now, I'm getting you out of a jam. Here! 
will be satisfied if you don't. Devil, let's finish this alone! What's the matter? You afraid I might be too fast for you? You better not, and I'll blow you to kingdom come. What's the matter? When I lower my rifle, you can go for your gun. Let's go home. 